humans dig up the coal that has been stored in the centre of the earth for millions of years and when we, when we use them it makes global warming. Global warming is when we're like using too much gas and it's polluting the world and it's making it really hot. Burning oil is taking up fossil fuels and burning them which is adding more carbon dioxide to the air. Everyone supposedly thinks it's like it's just summer, it's not. The sun's going to blow up. Polluting with all our cars, factories and burning coal. And also if we cut down the trees, they won't take the carbon dioxide. The global warming and it melts all the cold places. All the ice up on the North Pole, South Pole melt. If it melts, there'll be more water in the earth and some places near there, there could be a flood maybe. Not really in the world, basically. Wind and the sun are unlimited energy sources, so we could use those to create our own electricity and become sustainable. Turn lights off, shut doors. Put the rubbish in the bin. Yes. We should have less cars. Burning wood and plants is carbon neutral. Solar energy is just using the sun and it's not giving off any carbon dioxide or pollution. We only have one world at the moment. So once that's gone, well, it's off the last world. Turn off the boards, turn off the computer, um, turn cameras off. The atmosphere of the Earth is what makes it possible for us to live here. It means the planet doesn't get too hot in the daytime or too cold at night. The atmosphere is made up of air, a mixture of gases, oxygen that we need to breathe, with nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water vapour, and many other minor gases. Most scientists think that the climate or the average weather on our planet is changing. It's changing because the balance of gases in the atmosphere is changing and it is human activities which are making that happen. The biggest change is that more and more carbon dioxide is released from burning fossil fuels like oil, petrol, coal and gas. Using less of these fuels will reduce the amount of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, but there are other good reasons. If you save energy, you won't have to pay a lot of bills and everything, and it's good to save energy because if we use too much of it, it runs out. Carbon dioxide is known as a greenhouse gas. It traps heat from the sun like the glass in a greenhouse. Heat is important for life on Earth, but as the carbon dioxide in the air increases, the planet is getting hotter. At the North and South Poles, the ice sheets are melting more quickly than expected and in the warm parts of southern Europe, like Spain and Italy, there is less and less rain. Weather patterns are also becoming more unpredictable. The whole basic thing is to stop global warming, because if global warming happens, then a lot, of thing, a lot of things that we wouldn't want would happen. Whereas some people don't care at all about it and just and thinking that, well, I'd like a spot of hot weather. As the climate gets warmer, the water in the sea expands and the level of the sea goes up. Some whole countries are very low down and people will lose their houses if the sea level rises. It's starting to melt down Antarctica and as that melts the sea, the sea level rises and some places, some islands will be covered over. In countries like the United Kingdom where we use a lot of energy, saving it is really important. We can help to slow down climate change by doing simple things to save energy. Why aren't you finishing in the classroom? Can you turn the lights off and shut the door, please? But there are also cleaner ways of keeping warm, running cars and making electricity, than by burning coal or oil. Wind turbines can convert the energy from the wind into electricity. Burning waste wood from tree thinnings or from things that people have thrown away is another cleaner way of heating buildings than using gas or oil. We're not producing as much carbon dioxide as if, if we're using coal, because all we're doing is putting the dioxide, carbon dioxide that was in the tree to start with back into the air. Solar panels turn energy from sunlight into electricity. They can make electricity even on cloudy days in Britain. 
In this school, they mean smaller fuel bills. All the sun shines from the south onto the solar panels, which make the electricity go on all these wires, which brings it to the school. Pretty much every day we make a little bit at least. But in some places, like this village in Bangladesh, solar panels are the only way to get electricity. And because it's quite sunny most of the time, they make enough power for lights and a television. It means the children can have lessons after dark. My name is Tania. Tania The energy from running water can also be turned into electricity using a turbine. This one powers a whole village deep in the jungle in Sri Lanka, where there is no electricity from power stations. Television is great entertainment, but it's also a source of information. Sometimes we can even use our own muscles to power things like this pump used to water plants by farmers in India. It's cheaper than buying fuel for a motorised pump and it doesn't cause any pollution. In some countries, like Malawi in Africa, the only fuels that people can use for cooking are wood and charcoal. But this means that too many trees are being cut down. This cooking stove, that's been specially made to use half the amount of wood to make the same amount of heat, is making a big difference to school dinners. It makes less smoke, too. The stoves are very effective indeed. We are feeding 75,000 children every day and at the primary schools every morning. In Pune, a city in India, this man has developed a way of turning waste food into gas to cook with. Waste from food like banana skins gets mashed up and then it's left in this container where special bacteria turn it into gas. I only buy gas cylinders for heating bath water now. I cook all our meals using biogas. So even though scientists agree that the world is getting warmer because we are burning fossil fuels, there are things we can all do to help slow down the warming and make a difference. We can encourage teachers to change the way they use energy. The children come around the school and they, they actually tell me off for putting my radio on. They leave me little notes. Our teacher is not really good at saving energy because she keeps on leaving the radio on. And my computer's often left on when it shouldn't be. Also, she doesn't turn off the computer when she leaves. They do uh, become very confident in telling the teachers also about the problems in school. <laughs> Parents can be taught to make a difference too. Have you changed your energy use at home? Yes, we have. How? We're just trying to be more efficient by turning lights off and not wasting water and uh, recycling all our things as much as we can. Do try to turn the TV off more, not leave it on standby. Keep the doors closed. How do you feel about energy saving? I've recently discovered if you do actually take your things off standby, it makes an incredible saving on your, on your bills. So how do these students rate their parents on making a difference?